Hey there everyone, here are five top tips that are really going to help you out when you are working with masks. Top tip number one, mask etiquette, or should we say mask respect. These babies are going to be working so, so, so very hard for you and with you on stage, and they deserve your care and respect at all times. We do not leave our masks on the floor. No, they can get stepped on. And also, it just doesn't seem very respectful for something that is so beautiful and very, very expensive. OK, so if you're going to use a mask, keep them on a chair, keep them on a table. Or maybe if you're doing a Brechtian piece, you could you could hang it up on a coat hanger in the room because visible stage management is a great component if you're working in Brecht. But first tip, respect me. Don't leave me on the floor. And continuing under the banner of mask etiquette, we have how to put the mask on. Quite simply, you turn your back to the audience. You don't put your mask on facing the audience. I'll be talking about the magic of the mask quite a bit, and we want to create this wonderful illusion, this wonderful synthesis between the actor and the mask. We don't want to see the joins. We don't want to see this. Uh. Ah, I saw it go on, I saw it go off. It's, it's just messy, it's not pleasing, and it completely breaks the illusion. So for the magic of the mask, we turn our back, we put the mask on, and then we emerge. Tip number two, don't fiddle with the mask. Don't adjust it. Once it's on your face, leave it there. Even if it's so uncomfortable or you have an itch that's just driving you insane and you just want to rip it off your face, don't do it. Again, this will kill the mask, kill the magic. Now, this doesn't mean you can't touch the mask as part of the character. As you can see with the mask on my face here, I'm touching the mask gently to show that the character is woeful, worrying, a little bit frantic. And in that respect, touching the mask works really well. However, there's a big, big, big difference between touching the mask as part of the character and fiddling with it, adjusting it. It just kills the magic. So just don't do it. However, we do love working with these masks, but especially these ones, they're made of a really, really strong plastic, which means underneath, as you can see here, there are lots of bits that jut out and they can actually be very, very uncomfortable. When I first started wearing this one many, many years ago, it, it dug into my forehead, it dug into my cheekbones, gave me a bit of a headache. And I mean, I respect you, I really, really do, but you were, you were uncomfortable. It, it took time, it took time for us to get there. So tip in order to make Make it a little bit more comfortable is just get a washing up sponge, cut it, stick it inside the mask and it just takes the edge off. Another good tip if you're working with masks and it actually does get a little bit sweaty, it really can do, sanitary pads. Just stick these on. They're sticky, they're absorbent, they really, really work. Tip number three, look through your nose. This works really, really well in order to just get you used to moving and being animated with that mask. It sounds really, really obvious, but you've got to remember you've lost, especially with these half masks, you've lost half your face. In an entire mask, in a full mask, you don't even have your mouth to work with. We've lost our face. So therefore, if, you, if your character is looking around, if you just do that on stage, trust me, in a mask, it's not going to work. Here I am looking all over the place and nothing is happening. So in order to help, in order to create life within this mask, rather than just looking with your eyeballs, start looking with your nose. If you want to look left, look left with your nose. If you want to look right, look right with your nose. And then the whole face will follow and it just brings the energy of that mask to life and the audience will be able to follow you and understand where that mask is going. Sounds a bit weird, but try looking with your nose. Tip number four, don't kill the magic. I've mentioned that a few times already, but here is the big, big, big tip to keep this mask alive. This mask can die very, very easily. And the simple way to kill it is to stop it from moving. You have to keep it animated at all times. Like with puppetry, you don't see a puppet that stays still. If this mask stays still for more than about five seconds, it dies. It completely dies. So here is the mask dying. I'm really, really sorry to put this on screen. Maybe I should put a warning. This mask is about to die.
yeah, we lost the patient. We lost the patient, but let's revive it. Basically, we want to keep it animated. Just keep that mask moving. It doesn't have to be big, big, big movements and gestures. Keep it living, keep it breathing. One way I learned this, which I thought was quite funny, I used to play a lot of video games in the past, me and my brother whiled away the hours. And when you start a Street Fighter game or a fighting game, the characters always begin in their ready position and they just have that little bit of animation. They're not like this, they're ready, fight. So keep that mask animated. Here is the mask animated. Just little movements, little breaths, all of that vitality that gives it that wonderful illusion that the audience will absolutely enjoy and follow you with. Another way to not kill the magic is to ensure that the audience can see the mask. Remember, when you turn this all the way to the side, we start to lose a lot of the face. And if you turn it even more to the side, we start to see the elastic band at the back and we start to lose all this amazing, 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 amazing expression. So what we try and teach is to cheat the mask as much to the audience as you can. Now, turning left or right is going to be unavoidable. Otherwise, you're just going to be standing facing the audience the entire time. I'm not saying you can't turn left and right, but look at the difference here between me turning fully left, fully right, and then me cheating the mask slightly out towards the audience and turning left, and me cheating the mask out to the audience and turning right. We also want to avoid looking down for too long. We want to avoid looking up for too long. And we want to avoid turning around, putting our backs to the audience for any long period of time. Keep that mask alive. Keep the mask alive. Magic, stop it, stop it. Tip number five, physicality. We need to create a physical language for this mask. We can't just rely on our facial expressions. We now need to use all of our body, every single part of our body on stage, and our voice as well. Voice is not used when you're using a full mask, but in these half masks, we can take advantage of our voice as well. So where do we start? First thing that we like to do is we will look at the mask and just try and create the facial expression of the mask without the mask on. So let's have a look at her. Okay, so it's woeful. I see, uh, you see, automatically I started to create a voice dragging my mouth down, dragging it down, the face is down, like it's melting with the pressure of it all. Oh, very woeful, very wan. So that's how we start, with the face, yes? Then once the mask is on, just start breathing as the mask with that facial expression. See how it affects your breath. And then once you've got that physical language, you can start looking at a gesture that you can repeat. What gesture can you combine with this facial expression and this breath to communicate this character, this woeful character to an audience? Then start thinking about where does that character lead from? Where does the energy come from? What part of the body is driving the movement for this character? Does it come from their chest? Does it come from their shoulders? Does it come from their forehead? Does it come from their chin? Does it come from their nose? Now for this character, we have her as she's woeful, but she's also quite nosy. So she's very much leading with her nose. That is what is driving her energy through the space. I hope that was helpful, guys. Please let me know in the comments. And if you like the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. In the meantime, all the best. And if you can think of anything else that you'd like to have a tip or golden nugget bit of advice from me, put it in the comments below and I'll get back to you. All the best and goodbye.